Okay, uh, today I want to introduce you to System Recorder. Um, so, so we talked a little bit in the last video about uh, data flow analysis. Um, data flow analysis is a small portion of this entire system recorder. Uh, we will talk about system-wide recording and simplified analysis. These are marketing terms, so system-wide recording in general just refers to collecting a lot of different data so the PLC logging information um, all the device information uh, maybe servo status um, a video feed from a, an IP camera and uh, operation from an HMI so did the operator press buttons etc bringing it all into a central location um, and then sharing that information so so again system-wide recording is is a kind of a generic term uh, as well as simplified analysis. Uh, so again, generic, um, what that does is it takes GX Works 3, so we can have ladder monitor, um, we can have uh, the data flow analysis, which we've already looked at, we can have a video feed, uh, and then GX Log Viewer, and we can sync all of this together with a seek bar, uh, and so that the data will all be, you know, synced up. Uh, this is showing system-wide recording again the marketing term and the simplified analysis uh, and then all the different functions so I'm not gonna go through all this um, I have uh, a document uh, that I'll be posting to the knowledge base shortly that goes through all of this uh, just know that we're looking at one piece of a bigger puzzle today um, and in that piece that we're gonna be looking at is 1a so this scenario here we also have 1B and then uh, option 2. Uh, so this is network camera recording um, using an Axis camera. And if we look at this picture, what we've got is a standard CPU connected with the front port uh, to a hub, to a switch, uh, going out to the Axis camera. That Axis camera can be storing data uh, internally on an SD card or with a network share. Uh, and in this case we're using our PC just a shared file on our PC so what the CPU will do is go out to the camera and first it will set the time of the camera and then secondly it will tell the camera when to record images to push them to the shared server uh, the CPU will also do logging so we'll do CPU logging and then it will match those two up so the video file and the logging file will be synced in the coming phases we'll have a new product the RD81RC96 which will actually record a hundred percent of all CPU devices so in this situation with your current CPU we can't get a hundred percent of the devices uh, when we add this new module we'll be able to get everything all the D's all the labels all the M's everything in there logged constantly uh, with this module uh, so that will be coming soon and when we get that then the CPU will, it's new hardware, so the CPU will have to be upgraded. And then the final phase will be getting, uh, sometime next year, an update to that module. Uh, so this is what we call the recorder module, and the update will be called camera recorder module, so we put a CA at the end. That not only records everything in the CPU, all the devices and labels, but it also can record the camera images. So it will trigger the camera and store locally in the SD card. And the benefit there is everything is in one central location. Uh, so it makes it that much easier to, to compare uh, what was going on with the video feed to what was going on in Logic. Uh, this is a little bit blown up view. Uh, so we have a standard CPU, which I'm showing here. Uh, we have the switch. I've got a PoE uh, switch running to an Axis camera. Uh, again, my storage is my PC. Uh, so that is, is basically this, the CPU will be telling it what time is it so that they'll be time synced and then when to record. And I've got an e-stop here that I'm feeding in, not a safety e-stop because I don't have a safety CPU. Um, just a standard CPU is all that supports this function for now. So this is just wiring into an input. So when I press this e-stop, uh, we should get a fault and we should be able to see that fault. I've also got a GOT here showing uh, with a button to, to trigger the set time of the camera as well as to do a simulated fault. Uh, so I can either do a fault from physical e-stop or a fault uh, from here uh, to tell the camera, please record the data. And then we'll see the fault M1 
Uh, that will be our trigger to do CPU logging, and that will be our trigger to do camera capture, and then we can reset and try the, the simulation again. So with that, let's go ahead and take a quick look at this solution. Um, here is the logic. I'm not going to go through the logic. Uh, it does rely on two free function blocks. One function block sets the time, and the other one will trigger the camera to take images. Um, so let's get started. Uh, I can see that I'm connected uh, to my camera. See, I can wave in front. Um, I can zoom in if I want, and I also have this camera has PTZ action. Uh, and in the future, I'll be able to control this PTZ and zoom. When, when the camera recorder module comes out, this will all be controlled in the CPU. Um, but we can see we're connected. We've already got our uh, established system uh, going to a storage. Again, it's going to a local folder uh, called Axis Videos. I made that a shared folder. Here is my Axis Videos just on my C drive. So that will be where all of the videos are stored. Um, okay, so now that we've looked at the setup, let's go ahead and trigger uh, using the HMI. So if we were to simulate a fault, we press the button, we've got M1 on, we know M1 is our CPU logging trigger and M1 is our camera uh, file recording trigger. So that should have given us a, a file from the camera as well as a logging file from the PLC. So we'll take the fault off, we clear the fault, and we say let's go back and look see what actually happened. Um, first we'll bring up the video verification tool and let's open and we'll point at our video file, Axis Videos. Uh, basically, I made a shortcut in each one of these folders so I can flip back and forth so I can go to my uh, FTP files, the logging files, or back to my video files. So I go to my video files. Here's the folder, Axis Camera. Uh, 2020, August 5th, that's what we want. Uh, 11 o'clock, that's what we want. And then I'm just gonna choose the latest folder. So I double click and pull up this file. And what happens is now I can play this action and I should see that I triggered the screen right about there. Uh, and I'm capturing about five seconds before and about five seconds after. And you can see I'm still talking about the M1 trigger. So that video file captured, so perfect. So the function block inside the PLC went out and captured this video file. Within here, we could also put uh, logging markers if we wanted. So I could add a marker here and maybe here as points of interest. And I could flip back and forth between those and, and watch the video update. Just see if there's something else going on and to remember those. If you add a log marker file, that actually adds uh, information to the, the folder that this file is located, and it will remember this uh, from here on out. Now let's look at GXWorks 3. So if we come to this new tab, this new recording tab, brand new for GXWorks 1.065, let's start offline monitor. So that's the main function, offline monitor. And recording file would be if we have the recorder module or the camera recorder module where we're capturing 100% of all the devices and labels. We don't have that. We, we either have to choose logging file or memory dump. Uh, memory dump's gonna be all the devices, all the, all the standard devices just one, at one point. So it's, it's a dump of all the memory but only one time. So the logging file is what I'd recommend. That's what we have set up. So we say logging file, we go to our logging folder go all the way to the end, find the last binary, 1108. Um, so that's the one we want, so we double click. Do you wanna start? Yes. And what comes up, you'll see we have a seek bar. Uh, we're basically in an online state, but it's actually offline monitoring. So, so this isn't monitoring the PLC, this is monitoring the logged file, the logging information. Um, I've got 30 records before the event and 30 after. So if I come in here, I can say, take me to 30 and M1 is still off. But if I give one click here, so this will go to 31, M1 is on. So M1 was my trigger. I've got 30 records before and 30 records after. And again, I can click back and forth on the seek bar and see 
see what drove my M1 and it was the fake alarm M0 from the HMI. So pretty cool. Now what I can do here is say, okay, that's that's about where it happened. Uh, maybe I wanna go exactly to 31 and say, that's exactly the point that M1 turned on. Let's add a log marker, right? So now that's always there. At any point, I can jump to that position. Maybe I want one at the very beginning, add another log marker here, and all the way at the end, add a log marker here. Those are permanent, those stay with that file. So if we go back to the video verification, let's go ahead and delete these markers in here. So I've got no markers, right, a blank slate. Let's read the log marker file, and this time I'm gonna read the GXWorks3 log marker file. So I can come and find that in the log folder. So I need to jump to the log folder. There they are. All the way to the end, I'll see these LMS files, log marker files, and I want the last one that I created. Um, again, that's why it's so critical to know the timestamp and have the CPU synced with the video file, because uh, you're gonna be looking at the date and time um, down to the second to match these up. So when I open this, now I see that I have all three of those log markers all grouped real tightly together. So if I use the, this, I can go to the first one. I'm just about to press it, click it again. Nothing has actually changed because it happened so fast. And then click it one more time, nothing has changed. So all three of those um, are all grouped really tightly together. So on this time scale, uh, I only have 60 records and that's a record every CPU scan. So it's happening very, very fast. If I come here, it's 1108.54.553. And this is 11.08.54.570. So not even a whole second has gone by. And here I've got 10 seconds of data. That's why they all look grouped together. I could blow this up a little bit and kind of see that there's a couple in here. Uh, but I really don't know that until I, I hit this. So another key point of this is you may want to match. You may want to match your logging file time to your camera time so that they're on the time same time scale. Anyway, that's what the log, that's what that log marker does is it links these up. Now, while I'm in here, I could click on any one of these devices and say, give me, or I'll right click and say, give me the wave display. This is going to open up GX Log Viewer. Now you have to do that. You can't just open GX Log Viewer. You have to open it from within here because then it will match up and we'll see that GX Log Viewer is now looking at our CPU offline monitor mode. This is the logging data same as what I pulled up in here, this is the exact same logging information. And what you'll notice is, if I move this bar, um, let's link this here and this here. As I move this bar here, this line is changing. So at any point I can say, maybe I go to my log marker file and sure enough, when I look at M0, that's the button I pressed. So these are linked, so I can move it here and it reflects here, and I can move the seek bar here and it reflects here. So again, I'm syncing um, offline monitor of the ladder logic, all the devices that I logged uh, with the actual GX log viewer. And of course in log viewer, I can always you know do overlays, um, switch these around, change the colors, etc. So pretty powerful stuff um, matching uh, not only a video file, but actual logging f information, offline monitor, so ladder monitor, so I can see M1 uh, changing, and they're all synced with log marker data. And then, of course, the last thing uh, you know to show is if I right click, I can say uh, data flow analysis, and that will take me through what, what triggers M1. Uh, I can either come from X0, the E stop. Uh, or from M0, uh, the fake alarm, and that will take me directly to that location. So that's, that's how data flow analysis comes into play when we're in offline monitor mode. Um, and then I can see that M1 triggers this function block. This is the event trigger uh, function block. Okay, uh, very quickly, I'm just gonna show one more time. Uh, come in, hit the E stop, we get our fault, release the e-stop we can clear the fault so that should have recorded and so now let's go see if that did first again we'll check our video file so we want to switch to the video folder 11 o'clock we got a third folder here that's a good sign we open it up 
and if we come about in the middle there I am pressing the E stop uh, and again I can click individually through each one of these frames and see the exact moment when I press the E stop or if you had a uh, equipment problem maybe something jammed maybe a proc switch or a dog didn't get made um, uh, the product was incorrect going down the line whatever it may be you can see that exact moment in time and I come into GX Works 3 I already have um, I'm already in offline monitor mode I actually have to take myself out of that mode so I say stop and then we can go back in by selecting the new logging file that we just created uh, we're in the log folder come back down here b6 42 b6 that's the latest and we can jump right to this point and see M1 turned on, and that was before and after. So um, basically, we didn't have the E stop. And as we move through the frames one at a time, we can see the E stop came on and M1 came on, giving us our file. That summarizes the system-wide recording and the simplified analysis. Again, it's, it's step 1A, uh, a very small piece of this picture uh, where we have a CPU you can use off the shelf. You can test this now uh, with a, a, an access camera, either with a PoE switch providing power or some access cameras have their own power, going to either an SD card on the camera or to a network share. Um, and you could see this functionality. Uh, thank you for your time. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, and I look forward to showing you steps 1B and step 2 in the near future.